everybody, and welcome to another Agile IT Tech Talk. I'm your host, Sean Spicer, and today we're going to be going over DSRs, uh, data subject requests, and the e-discovery tools that are available in Microsoft 365. This is the third in a series covering, very broadly covering the compliance tools that are available in Microsoft 365. And next week, we're going to jump the rails into a totally new topic, and we're going to be joined by our CEO, Conrad Agramont, who's going to talk us through removing a local Active Directory. Um, this year has seems like it's the year of removing Active Directory. So once you've moved to the cloud, a lot of times you've got a lot of little things that are still tied in with AD, uh, with your local AD, and it it winds up just sitting there and becoming a liability both for security as well as the reliability of your systems. And we've done this a number of times. We, of course, ate our own dog food and did it to ourselves first. Um, it is a interesting process. There's a lot that can go wrong, um, but we have been doing this for clients, God, just pretty much week by week now. And it is a very fascinating process. So as I've mentioned, we launched our new podcast, the Clearly Cloud podcast, two weeks ago. And in the first two sessions, uh, we were joined by David Pryor from Microsoft, who is their director of external affairs and was a lobbyist for 10 years. And he talked about the fight within the house to pass the Cloud Act. And it was a really compelling story. And then in the second week, we were joined by a really dear friend of mine, Carrie Lenning, who was a privacy analyst for both Facebook and Palantir and founded a privacy and security firm called Knowledgence. And she took it to the other side of the pond and discussed the recent death, <clears throat> pardon me, of Privacy Shield in the EU and the Shrebs cases, how GDPR fits into everything, and really what the state of privacy is in the EU. Um, so on that note of privacy, um, I want to talk today about data subject requests and some of these e-discovery tools. So let's get started. So in a tech talk, um, God, about five months ago, we fired Megan Bowen. And we used this as a demonstration of what it takes to uh, safely and quickly remove an employee from Office 365 without losing any of their data. Um, so in this demo, we're treating Megan Bowen as the employee of Contoso, of course, but this time she's in France. And so she's subject to GDPR. If she were here in California, the same policies would apply through CCPA and she's technically a data subject. So during her exit interview, she requested a DSR, a data subject request of her digital footprint within Contoso in accordance with GDPR. So Alan DeYoung, who we're pretending to be now, is Contoso's compliance administrator, and he received that request. So he signs in to the Compliance and Security Center, and it's really pretty cut and dry. So we've got this uh, card here for uh, we are committed to helping your GDPR journey. Takes you right to the GDPR dashboard. And from here, we can access tools to create DSR cases, as well as see current and closed cases from the past 60 days. So you can see here, we've got the toolbox, smart assistant, launch a DSR case, um, view all cases. Let's go ahead and look at some of the cases we've had over the last 60 days. So we've already created an initial case for Megan. We're going to go ahead and open that up now. And cases are broken up into searches, if you remember er the earlier sessions. So creating a DSR case automatically creates a search for typical content based on her name and user ID. So we're going to go ahead and click on her case. We can see when it was last run. And for this case, uh, we can see that we received 426 items uh, for a total of 249 megs. <clears throat> In a real company, the search result could be thousands of items. So over here, we can see what was included. So we've got notes, conversations, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, voice conversations, and then Teams messages. And we also have the status, which shows the completeness of the search. So here we're going to go ahead and view the results and what we found. And this is useful because we're going to refine them. So Microsoft 365 eDiscovery searches um, offer a very detailed way to filter out results. So you can see that there are 325 items previewed. 
There's 320 items previewed. Um, and then we want to go ahead and we want to start adding conditions. So here you can see type is email, documents, and instant messages. We're going to go ahead and add some conditions. So what we want to do is we want to add these filters in order to reduce the workload on the legal team. So let's do subject title. Sender and add. And format preview. So now we can see showing one out of 50. So now we want to remove that noise. Um, so we want to get rid of any automated senders like Office 365 uh, alerts. Contains none of. Choose users. So this is going to get it. Uh, this is going to filter emails and documents by title and subject related to activities such as contracts and patents. Um, he also adds two proprietary projects that she worked on. So we want equals any of. Contains none of. Then we're going to put in the names of the projects and contracts. So the Mark 8 and the X1050. We're going to go ahead and save and run. So this leaves how many? 266 items sampled out of almost 500. And these are going to be reviewed for this DSR. And now we can take those refined search results and prepare them for export. So we're going to go ahead and export results. And now this streamlines the report or streamlines the export by placing all of these emails into a single PST file. So what we want to do is we want to create a PST file that contains all messages. And we want to enable deduplication so that we don't get all of the huge multi-thread things. We want to include versions for SharePoint files. And then we want to export everything in a zip folder. So this just makes it smaller for downloading. Now this will only include individual messages and SharePoint documents. Now we're going to go ahead and export. And that's going to be available up here in the exports tab. So we've got Megan Bowen export. We can see the time it was started and we can just open it up by clicking on it. Now the export process creates a secure key needed to complete the download. We can send this key to those needing access, in this case, our legal department. And once the legal department reviews and makes suggestions, Alan can rerun the export with the recommendations. He can run the, he can then export the results again, and finally download the DSR to provide to Megan. So you can see here, we've got the download results as well as the export key. And that's this here. And you just click to copy the keyboard. So DSR is just a sample of some of the powerful e-discovery features in Microsoft 365. Um, this really gets powerful when you get into things like legal requests and legal hold. But let's go ahead and look at the search and investigation features for that. So right now, um, we're going to do a review of how the sales team set prices. Um, so this would probably be something coming from government particularly if you work for Facebook, Amazon, um, or uh, yeah, Apple and the uh, companies that were brought up in front of the house two weeks ago. So let's go ahead. We've got sales review. We're going to open this up. And as requested, a uh, hold has been placed on the email boxes of the sales team during this review. So that keeps them from deleting it. Um, so we just have a locked down uh, version of what is in their email box. So we've also got a pre-existing search that Alan did for them. And then let's go ahead and go to advanced e-discovery. And we want to find things that are relevant. So with large sets of data, um, AI will help refine the search. So can do things like remove duplicates and focus in on finding relevant documents. So that's uh, done with tagging. And let's go ahead and do the express analysis. And AI will also cover themes, which are special filters based on keyword patterns that can speed up e-discovery. So we can look at 
uh, those to calculate themes. And then we'll, we've already run this, so let's go ahead and look at results. So in this case, the legal team asked us to find all communication related to Contoso's customer, Northwind. Uh, so we can quickly review the results and confirm that the initial analysis is complete. And so you can see filtered in 6,475 items. Uh, 6,033 of those are emails with 442 attachments. Um, and that's accumulated over all sessions. And then there was only one session run, so these are identical. So let's look at the searches that were run. And we use the searches feature to pull results from the initial set of messages. In this case, we want everything that relates to the work with Northwind. So we're gonna do that first with keywords. So we'll go ahead and type in Northwind, and we're gonna go ahead and save and run. We wanna name the search. And save it. And now after finding all of these messages, in order to categorize it, what we want to do now is we want to label them. So we're gonna go ahead and label as, create a new label, give it a friendly name, and then create that label. And so here you can see we've got 34 results. We're gonna go ahead and select all. And we want to go ahead and label as Northwind and apply. And so this can also be done by searching by senders, groups, um, recipients, and you can also set up multiple uh, keywords that you search for and then combine them. And then you can use Boolean searching in order to segment things out. So perhaps there is a product called Northwind or you're working with somebody with the unfortunate name of Broke Northwind. I don't know. Um, but again, you have all of the data searching, filtering and segmenting tools that are available throughout all of Compliance Center when you're doing this e-discovery. And really what this is meant to do is to enable um, IT administrators to work easily with legal teams or compliance administrators who don't have all of the experience and knowledge of the IT team to work independently. And of course, there are controls. We went over that in the session two weeks ago um, about the different roles that are available within uh, Compliance Center. So you've got compliance readers, compliance admins, compliance reporters, which all have different access. And that's important because you've, a lot of times you don't want an IT admin being able to go in and search for his name and find out any email or Teams message that somebody may have sent about him. Um, good way to not get tickets answered. Um, so I know this was a shorter than normal tech talk. Um, as always, our tech talks are a service for our MSP and CSP clients. After the session is completed, we go ahead and open up the lines for questions. If you are watching this on YouTube or reading about it on the blog, feel free to leave questions in the comments below. I'd love to answer those. Um, sometimes I actually have to go and talk to our engineers to figure them out, uh, but I pretty much know my way around compliance. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave those below. Give us a like and follow, and thanks for watching.